Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? I hope you're doing fine. We are excited. Uh, on this day, January, excuse me, February the 10th, February the 10th, 2021. Welcome to our the Wednesday edition of the Wednesday Bible study. Good morning, Denise Bridges. Nice to have you with us this morning. We're so excited. Good morning, Miss Jackie Bridges. Nice to have you with us. Tiffany McGill, good morning. God bless you all for joining us. Brian Chapel, good morning. I'm so excited. Miss Ernestine Norris, good morning. Miss McCann, I know you can. Miss Vanessa Dawkins, good morning to you and to others who are logging on. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Bible study this week. Good morning, Trustee Bonner. Aunt Dot, good morning. Karen Proctor, good morning. We're excited. Tell your neighbors and friends uh, that Pastor Bridges is on again. Amen. Doing this Bible study uh, this week on uh, continuing on the positions of prayer. And this has been a wonderful topic. Good morning, uh, Miss Cynthia McGill, uh, Brother Freeman, and also Miss Bernice May, if you're watching. Uh, good morning, Miss Janet Lindsay. Minister Tate, God bless you. Good morning to you and to each of you. Amen. And those who have not come in it, amen. I can't see who you are, but thank you anyway for being part of our morning Bible study. Good morning, Elvis, Elbo, softball, basketball, football, Johnson, referee in the house. God bless you, man. You and, and Miss Johnson and family. Uh, Karen uh, Funderburg Patrick, good morning, classmate. Uh, and also Miss Alice uh, Gaynor Hardy, good morning to you. Oh, I'm excited about this Bible study. We're continuing on uh, the positions of prayer today. Uh, we will uh, be going into uh, part two of bowing and praying. And again, tell your neighbors, tell your friends that Bible study is here again. Bow your heads with us. Amen. Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather this morning. We thank you for life, help, and strength. We thank you uh, for your goodness and mercy toward us. We thank you, O oh Father, for our forgiveness of sin. For we know, O oh Father, that we have uh, fallen short of your glory. But the Bible said all have sinned and come short of your glory. But we thank you. God, for Jesus, so if we confess our sins, uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us up from all unrighteousness. God, I pray this day, God, that you will bless us uh, to be blessed by your word. God, we thank you for those who are logging on and those who will log on later uh, this morning and others, God, maybe this afternoon or uh, whenever they have time to watch this wonderful Bible study. I pray, oh God, for your anointing to be strong. I pray, oh Father, for your hands uh, to, to give us something to hold on to. God, down in our hearts and our minds, let this word uh, be hid in our heart that we might not sin against you. Give us ears to hear. Give us minds to understand. Give us eyes to see. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the believers said, Amen. Did you say Amen? God bless you. And again, we thank you so much for joining us this morning. We also have Miss Aquila Littlejohn and Miss Annie Littlejohn in Brooklyn. New York by way of Gaffney, South Carolina. People from Gaffney all over the world. Amen. God bless you. Uh, Miss Ruby Michaels, God bless you this morning. Big John, God bless you. Uh, my friend and brother Sean Miss, God bless you. Miss Minnie Henderson, good morning. Rex, amen. My friend, Edgerton, there in Boston, Massachusetts, and Miss Minnie Henderson again. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Kings. If you will turn to 1 Kings, amen, chapter 1. And again, uh, when you hear kings, uh, that's uh, what you should really think of. Because kings, amen, uh, begins to talk about the kings of, of, of Israel, the kings of God's chosen people. Amen. It begins there. Amen. Uh, as it starts with David. Amen. Uh, Saul was the first king and he is found in the books of Samuel. Amen. But when 
uh, you, if you will, just flip to that first part there in First Kings chapter one verse one. It said, "Now King David was old and stricken in years, Amen." And they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat, Amen. He he was sickly, Amen. And that's why uh, this part is very important. And um, and I just wanted to share that with you because the book of Kings, First Kings and Second Kings, Amen, deals with the leadership. Amen. Can somebody type out there the leadership? Good morning, Linda Fay Lou. Uh, Hui, God bless you. Amen. And that's what it deals with. It deals with the leadership, amen, of, amen, God's chosen people. And if you will today, amen, if you would turn with me again at 1 Kings chapter 1, we're going to today start with verse 45. Verse 45. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. I'm excited about this Bible study today. Good morning, Miss Gloria Davis. Amen. And to each of you. Amen. Verse 45 is our first scripture today. Amen. Let's read it together. Amen. First Kings chapter 1 and verse 45. Ready and let's read. And Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, have anointed him king in Guyon. And they are come up from thence rejoicing, so that the city rang again. This is the noise that ye have heard. Amen. There we have again the king. Amen. Who was David. And uh, we will be introduced in just a few verses to uh, who's on deck. Amen. Amen. I want to say to you, amen, that if you are in leadership, amen, please know, amen, that somebody will follow you. Amen. You will not have the a lifetime appointment. In some cases, that may be true. But when your life on this side is over, somebody else is going to have to step into that position. Amen. That's why it's so important, amen, that leaders, amen, share, amen, with those you're leading. Amen. The next leader may be in that flock. That next leader may already be in the group. Amen. But you have to uh, share your knowledge to help others grow. Amen. Somebody put that out there in the comments because that's one major mistake we find in leadership that they don't share the knowledge. Amen. So when they're gone or when they resign or when the Lord take them home or uh, whatever the case might be, instead of sharing, amen, information about where uh, stuff is or how to do this and that, amen, um, it's like setting them back. Amen. The leadership job is always to make it better for the person that's following you. Amen. 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 That, that, that's why leadership is so important. You make it, Jesus made it better for his disciples. He, he got them ready for when he left. No, Jesus was not their leader for 15, 20, 40, 50, 90 years. He was only their leader for three and a half years. And he got those guys ready. They got the world ready. And he's still getting us ready. Amen. For the work ahead. God bless you. Good morning to you. Amen. Now, as we go there, it says uh, Nathan, the prophet. And then it says, amen, <clears throat> excuse me, in Zadok, the priest. Amen. And, and, and when they came up, they had anointed, amen, uh, uh, Solomon as the leader. And the people were happy about it. Amen. People are happy. Are you happy, amen, to hear good news about your leader? Or when you hear about your leader, does it make you sad? Hmm. Uh, you know your answer. Amen. When you think about, amen, what this country just went through, when you, when you hear about our former leader, does it make you sad? Or does it make you happy? Amen. The Bible talks about where there, there's a good, righteous leader, there's peace in the land. I'm going to move on for that. <laughs> I'm going to move on for that. But they were making a noise. They was excited. Verse 46. Come on. I need everybody to read there. God bless you. Amen. We're so happy to have Miss Drain. God bless you. And I think, amen, Miss Jeffries, I think we got you. Uh, Miss Bonner, good morning. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. I'm seeing names. I see Charles Brown. Nice to have you with us today. All the way from Philly. Philly, Philly. Philly, Philly. 46, come on, ready and read. And also Solomon, 
sitteth on the throne of the king. Amen. Verse 1 in 1 Kings chapter 1 tells us that David was sick. And, and isn't it amazing when you get sick, you get cold, the older people, and even if you're young, sometimes when you're sick, you get cold, hard to warm up. They try to warm him up, but they prepared. And, and other people wanted the leadership, but, but when they asked David and, and when they asked God and the priest, amen, and, and the prophet got together, they just didn't pick anybody, amen. They picked somebody who they believed that was going to do a good job. And they said that they anointed Solomon. Verse 47, come on. I need everybody to read that. Good morning, Ms. Sheila Byers. God bless you. We're praying for you and your family. Amen. On, on the passing of your sister. May God bless the entire uh, Hui uh, and the man and family. God bless you in a mighty way. Good morning, Miss Edwards. Miss Callie. Amen. Young in Cleveland. Miss Loretta Watts. God bless you. Verse 47, come on, everybody. And moreover, the king's servant. Amen. Came to bless our Lord, King David. Amen. Even when he was getting ready to die, people were still coming to be a blessing. Good morning, Lee, Lee Little. Lee Little, Lee Little, Lee Little, Lee Little, Lee Little in the house. Lee Little John, God bless you. Amen. Now, notice what it said. It said, moreover, the king's servant uh, came to bless our Lord, King David. Amen. Now, you see that? Now, when it says King David saying, God make the name of Solomon better than thy name. Good Lord Almighty. And make his throne greater than thy throne. Yeah. And the king bowed himself. Good Lord Almighty. Y'all don't hear me. The king was sick. He wasn't feeling good. He was cold. How many people say, I'm cold. Ooh. I'm not getting down on my knees and bow down. Huh? Good morning, Pastor Black, my friend. I love you, bro. Now, notice what he said there in verse, um, verse 47. We're going to read that once again. First King uh, chapter 1 and verse 47. It said, and moreover, the king's servants. Now, notice, this is a transition of leadership. Hello, chosen anointed. It said here that the king servant, those who served with King David, amen, was still there. Isn't it amazing that when transfer leadership was done, amen, uh, that uh, y'all know what happened, amen, left and didn't even come to the to the celebration. Hmm. But not here. Not in verse forty-seven. It said the king's servant came still to bless the Lord. And, and, and then they said, we, we love you, King David, but I pray that our next leader will be even greater. Your next leader, your, your next uh, quarterback, your next running back, your next whatever it is should be greater. Your next job, amen, should be a step up and not a step back. Lord have mercy. Your, best, your next car should be a step up instead of a step back. Amen. Your next home should be a step up instead of a step back. Amen. That's why I want everybody to get saved because your your your, your home, your your next home should be better than this home. <laughs> so many people invest in this earthly house, but but don't invest in that house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Well, that's the one we need. It's gonna be better. So they had the right attitude. Amen. They had the right atmosphere. They were already praising, amen, and making rejoicing and sounds of transfer, just like an inauguration. There were sounds of gladness. And, 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 and they said there, amen, that we want, uh, and, and he wanted the best for the next one. You got to want what's best for whoever following you. Amen. Amen. Boyfriend and girlfriend, don't move backwards. <laughs> you, you, you better step it up. Don't move backwards. Don't move backwards. You move up. Move up. And then it said, and, and, and the king heard all of this. He wasn't mad and frustrated. That, that's what we get into the verse 7. Verse 7, I mean 47. It said, and the king bowed himself upon the bed. Good Lord of mine. Amen. He, he bowed himself. I don't know whether he was, he was sitting up in the bed and he bowed down to pray 
or whether he eased down to the side of the bed and, and people get down on their knees and bow on the bed. I don't know, but, but that's what it said he did. We're talking about bowing. Now, if King David bowed and prayed, whew, I think it's a good, maybe a good thing if you can implement that in your prayer life somewhere. Good morning, Mr. Little John. God bless you. God bless you. I'm just excited. Oh, Link the Linda. I see you out there. Miss Katrina. Good Lord, I'm excited. Now notice what it said here. Amen. It says here, amen, that when he did that, he bowed upon, amen, the bed. And 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 my question to you is, I'm gonna go back. This is the first, uh, maybe not the first question, but this is a question I'm looking for the answer for. Who all was there when David bowed upon the bed? It tells us who was there. We just went through the verses. Amen. I, I'm going to give you a little jeopardy as, as you find them. Doom, 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 doom. I'm looking for the answers in the comments. Doom, 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 all right, here we go. I'm looking for some answers. Who was in there, amen, when David bowed upon his bed? God bless you. Chris still got it, Adams. Good morning, my friend and brother. Love you, man. Latoya Gomer, good morning. Who was there? You can find the answer in verse 45. In verse 46, you can find the answer there. Who was in the room? He was not embarrassed, amen, to bow down in his room and pray. He was sick. So I'm looking for the answer. Somebody need to send them to me. Come on, send them to me. I know y'all probably done sent them, but sometimes I get a delay on this end. Sometimes I get a delay, amen, but I'm looking for the answers. Who was in the room with King David. How many know when when you get sick, people uh, uh, want to come in the room and see? Huh? I just seen it happen. I seen it happen a few months ago with my father. Solomon was in there. Yes, come on. That's that's a couple more names I'm looking for. Shell Harris. Good morning. Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet. There you go. Y'all got it. Ding ding ding. We got some winners. We have some winners, oh Lord. Amen. I'm on when we get back in the Bible study, those who come live, I'm gonna have some candy in there. I'm gonna give some candy, but I can't give it to you in the church. I gotta give it to you on, on in the in the foyer on the way out. We don't have candy and stuff in the sanctuary. <laughs> but God is good. Now notice what he said there. Yes, the duke, the priest was there, the prophet was there, those are godly men, the king was there, the leaders were there. And see. And that's another thing about Jesus. See, Zadok was the priest. Nathan was the prophet. And David was the king. But my brothers and sisters, I come to tell you that Jesus is all of them in one. Amen. He the prophet, the priest, and the king in one. Jesus unified three positions. Just like God, amen, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Three positions, but one. Amen. Jesus unified that thing back when he came to earth. God bless you. Y'all have got all them right answers. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are awesome. Now, I want to get to the word bow down. Amen. There in verse uh, 47. And then we got to go on. We got a few more stops to make. Amen. This bus is moving. Amen. This Bible study bus of knowledge. Amen. It's on the way. Now, what we want you to do, amen, if you would look, I, I want you to share something with you. Amen. The, the, again, the word bow is important. Now go to verse 48. We're going to read it together. And, and, and then we got another stop to make. Verse 48. Come on. Y'all oh, y'all are awesome out there. Y'all are awesome group. Ready to read. Verse 48. And also thus said the king. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Which hath given one to sit on my throne this day. Mine eyes even seeing it. Yeah. Please continue verse 49. And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid and rose up and went every man to his way. Yeah. See, Adonijah wanted to be the next king. 
But how many know that when God says how it's going to be, that's how it's going to be? Amen. You can't stop it. You can't block it. Uh, when God has anointed and appointed you, amen, that's just how it is. Amen. Some people were rejoicing and some people were mad. That sounds familiar, don't it? <laughs> amen. And any time, most of the time, when you have a serious decision to make, when you have a decision to make about what's best for you, amen, sometimes what's best for you is not best for others. But God has a plan for you. And I did want you to see that there, that, uh, 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 that again, he said, blessed be the Lord God. So not only did he just bow, but he was talking to God. And that's what we're talking about. He bowed down and prayed even though he was sick. Huh? Oh, I was so sick, I couldn't even pray. I've heard people say that before, and that could be the case. That's why we have to pray ye for one another. But when you, you and you don't have to get in the bowing position to pray, but I just want you to know that, it, but if David did it, <laughs> it it's something to it. Hmm. We read uh, uh, a few weeks ago when we did kneeling that, that Jesus kneeled and prayed. Hmm, it must be something to it. And again, sometimes bowing and kneeling goes together in prayer. Good Lord Almighty. I'm excited. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God bless you. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Let's move on. Our next stop today. We're looking at bowing now. It's Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God is good. I'm so excited. And thank you all for being a part of this Bible study. Oh, it's not the same without you. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing it and, and, and telling others to join us. Good morning, Miss Lisa Petty. God bless you. We're so thankful to have all of you on today. And others, again, who may not uh, be able to come in, that be at work, that you are at work or other places and not come in. And I understand. And I hope my friend is able to watch today. Amen. Um, Miss Winberg. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> all right. Mark chapter one. Mark, amen, is a book of action. Amen. When I think of Mark, and people say, get on your marks, get set, go. Y'all ever heard that before? If you ever heard that before, I mean, put out there in the comments, I've heard that before. You're at the beginning of a race, at the beginning of a uh, competitive athletic event. Amen. We are on your marks. And that's what Mark is. Mark, Mark is you, 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 you ready to go. Mark doesn't have many chapters, but Mark is full of action. Mark is a book of action. And so as you read the book of Mark, amen, it, it gives detail, but not as much as Matthew, amen, Luke, and John. Uh, Mark just goes straight to the point, amen. He goes straight to the story. He gets right in the story. And, and, and uh, Mark chapter 5, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 5, I said 1, but chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, I'm so sorry out there. Mark chapter 5, I'll give you some time to adjust, and I want to thank all of you. Uh, for being a part of this, and we're going to start with this story, amen, um, hmm. it's so important, isn't it? yeah, Mark chapter 5, verse 1, if you found this, say glory, here we go, here we go, I want you to read it out loud if you can, good morning, Reverend Williams, good morning, amen, God bless you, God bless you, all right, amen, here we go, Mark chapter 5, verse 1. Come on, read it out loud. Faith come by hearing. Ready to read. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Amen. Amen. When you see uh, the Gadarenes, amen, uh, you will see that this country, amen, is a region, amen, that's on the south of, uh, of Jerusalem, down toward around the Red Sea. Uh, and if you would go a little bit farther to uh, to the east, if you had a map in front of you, you would run into desert. You would run into dry places. You would run into uh, uninhabited uh, 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 territory. 
Now people pass through there, but they don't live there. They they live there, but but out there, amen. Go on to verse two, because we get into the story. I told you, Mark, we got straight to the action. Amen. We already on go. We moving here. Amen. And this ain't no this not a warm-up story. Amen. We right into the midst of it. Verse two, ready and read. And when he was come out of the ship, amen, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Yeah. Time he got to the other side. Amen. Good morning, Yolanda Edwards. Good morning to you, classmates. God bless you so much for being with us also. Amen. Now, notice what it said. This Have you ever went somewhere and before you get out the car, they're already at the car? <laughs> huh? Ever seen those people on TV? Amen. And, and maybe you like that. Maybe you got it going on. You know what I'm saying? And where you go, people, just, you know, they be there waiting on you, pointing at you, clapping and glad to see you. But everybody was looking. Jesus was a rock star because he is the rock of ages. Huh? He's a rock star because he's a rock in a weary land. He, he's a rock because he's solid. Hmm? As for the Simpsons said, solid, solid as a rock. Y'all remember that one? Hmm? Before that was, Jesus already was. And so when he got out of the ship, amen, when a, 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 a man met him out of the tombs, amen, it didn't say he was out of a helicopter, he was out of a limousine. He, he was out of a, a, a taxi cab. Amen. Amen. He, he, no, 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 no. This man came out of the tombs. He came out of the grave, y'all. Lord have mercy. That's what it, you, it did say tombs. Amen. I want you to look at verse 2. Did, it, does your tomb have an S on it or does it just say tomb? I, I want to know. Put it in the comments. It, mine has an S on it. So this let me know this guy was in the grave, y'all. Hanging out there with, 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 with folk that had already left their bodies. But, but this man had an unclean spirit. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This man was out there with bodies and, and, and he had an unclean spirit in him. Good morning, Janine. Nice to have you on the scene. Amen. Verse 3. Come on. We got to read this thing. Time ticking. Ticking is time. Amen. What time is it? What? Time it is. Y'all don't remember that old gospel song, do you? Hmm? Time to fall down on your knees and pray. And ask the Lord for a brand new day. That's what time it is. God bless you. Amen. Here we go. Verse 3. Come on. I need everybody. I need you to read out loud because, amen, the, 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 me and you, you and, and, and the, the Bible study group, we're reading this thing together. We can't hear each other. But come on, let's read this thing together. Because that rejoicing in the air, something will happen. Verse 3, come on. Who had his dwelling among the tombs? And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Yeah, he had his dwelling among, that's where he stayed at, in the, in, 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 in the, in the tomb. Ella Presley and, and Michael Jackson made a song talking about the Heartbreak Hotel. Huh? Heartbreak Hotel. Huh? He didn't even he wasn't even standing at the heartbreak hotel. This guy was standing in the tomb. Good Lord of money. Out there. Hmm. In the graveyard. See, that what happened when you when you have an evil spirit in you or influenced by people with evil spirits, they'll lead you to people that's not living. Good Lord of money. They might be alive, but they're not living. Hmm? Just because you're alive don't mean you're living. You, 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 you have to, uh, uh, in order to really live, you've got to have God. Amen. It said, in him was life, and life more abundantly. That's what Jesus came to do. Amen. That's when you really begin to live when you get saved. Yeah. Now, notice this man was not living, but he was existing. Good Lord of money. Man, that's some good information. I'm getting happy in here. Amen. I'm, I'm, I, feel, I feel my helper coming. <laughs> I feel good. Hey, good morning, Mary Thomas. Good morning, Sarah Little John. Good morning, Arilla Holmes. I'm feeling good. Come on. No man could bind him. Nobody could, could, could tie him up. Nobody could keep him under control. But look at verse 4. Man, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're still looking at positions of prayer. But I want you to know sometimes things... Somebody put out their things. All kept by the letters and with an S on it. Put things out there. Good morning, Pam, Tate, Pila. Amen. God bless you. 
Glad to have you with us so much. Amen. Kathy Branton. Amen. God bless you. Now, I need everybody to put things out there. Things. Things happen. Sometimes things will get us, amen, to realize that we're in a dead situation. Good Lord Almighty. Amen. Mama done told you. Daddy's told you. Uh, uh, sister and brother told you. Aunts and uncles told you. Grandma and grandpa told you. Pastor told you. Policeman told you. Schoolmates told you. Principal told you. Police at the, at, 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 at the little campus security told you. But sometimes you won't listen until everything around you is dead. Lord, don't wait that long. Don't wait that long. Amen. Somebody put things and then I need about a few more people to put. Don't wait that long. Don't wait that long. Lord, I told y'all marks mean go. On your mark, mark, mark. Get sad, go. We going here. Now notice what it says, verse 4. Good Lord of mine. Mark chapter 5, verse 4. I need everybody to read. I see things, 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 things. I see things all over my screen. God bless all of the thing club here. Yes. Yeah. And I'm waiting on some don't wait too long. Verse 4. Come on. Come on. I need everybody. Let's read. Because that. He had been often bound with fetters and chains. Hmm. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Good Lord Almighty. Can somebody write out there by him? Yeah. And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. He didn't want to be held down. He wanted to be wild. Amen. Born to be wild. Y'all heard that now. <laughs> no, but we weren't born to be wild. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. We were born, amen, to live with God. And that's why in order to live with him, that firstborn is just not enough. That first birth is just not enough. Jesus said you must be born again. Yes, yes, born again to be like Jesus. See, that first man is earth, earthly, it's earthy, it's earthly. You care about the world and care about all of these things, which will lead to death, which will lead you to being in the graveyard, amen, which will lead you to want to live in a dead situation. Huh? Some people know they're in a dead situation and just live it, just keep living in it. They don't want to do no better. They don't want to listen to nobody. Don't want to listen to no gospel music. Don't want to hear no good gospel preachers. Don't want to hear no good gospel Sunday school teachers. Don't want to listen to any witnesses that they, they, they don't they don't want to. But but notice what it, 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 he wanted to get loose. You can do what you want to do. That's all I'm, the point I'm trying to make. If this man had strength enough to break chains, he, he should have strength enough to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I want to be saved. You got to be strong to break some chains. I didn't see in here that his name was Hercules or uh, uh, Lufa Rick, no, or Tony Atlas. Uh, none of those big muscle-bound men around the world and, and maybe some muscle-bound women out there. I don't know. Amen. But all I'm trying to tell you is if he had strength to tie this stuff up, he should have faith the size of a mustard seed just to say, Lord, I'm tired of this dead situation. Good Lord. Huh? Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? Hmm? You got to have that kind of strength just to say it. You got to have strength. As we said Sunday, those who miss Sunday's sermon, you have to go watch it. It talks about you have to lay it down. If you got strength to tear up chains, you got strength to lay down those things that hinder you. Huh? Those magazines you got to stick up under your mattress, those things you drive down the road with, you got to stick up under your seat. Amen. Those things, amen, that, that cause you to be out of your right mind. You got to lay it down and say, Lord, I don't want it no more. I want to pick up you. Now, notice what happened here. Amen. I think we are on verse five. We almost there. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Verse five. Come on. Verse five. Come on, everybody. 
And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, good Lord Almighty, and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. That's what an evil spirit will make you do. Amen. In the mountains, in the mountain, even in the desert, mountains get cold at night. Hmm? Away from everybody. The devil, the devil, the devil, evil spirits will say, don't talk to your family. Don't talk to your friends. Don't talk to nobody but me. Huh? We need people. People were designed to communicate with other people. Amen. And that's a sign of the enemy. That's the sign of an evil spirit will isolate you. Somebody put isolate out there. Good Lord Almighty. Huh? I'm, I'm just trying to, trying to help somebody on your road to glory. That's all I'm trying to do. That's all I'm trying to do this morning. Good morning, Miss Keisha. Now, notice what he said. I think we did. He was crying and cutting himself. Crying and cutting itself. Lord have mercy. That's why, again, we got to look at our neighbors and friends and family members. If we see them uh, acting a little strange, it might be something going on. Talk to them. Hey, what's going on? Call them. Text them. Man, I just saw you. I've never seen you cry like that before. What's going on? What's on your mind? Huh? Well, you know, no. The devil would trick you to try to get you to hurt yourself. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Jesus came to heal, save, fix, and deliver. He did not come to destroy. Amen. That's what the devil come to do. Seek, to kill, steal, and destroy. That's how you can. Uh, some, ah! Whoa, I had to stop. Listen to me. 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 That's how you can tell a lot of times if your thinking is right. If you want to help somebody or if you want to hurt somebody. huh? I'm just trying to help you see how easy it is. And you can want to hurt somebody so bad that you could react before you think. And then you're in a lifetime of trouble. But just pause and think, is this going to help somebody or hurt somebody? And a lot of times you will get the right answer from God on what to do or what not to do. God bless you. Thank you for stopping there with me. We had to stop and talk about that right there. God bless you. Let's move on. But notice what happened in verse 6. Good Lord Almighty. Verse 6, if you got a highlighter, you highlight it. Tap yourself on the shoulder and say, this is the verse. Tap yourself on the shoulder and say, this verse right here, this verse right here, this one right here. You ever heard somebody say, this one right, this one right here, this verse right here. This, this, this man with this unclean spirit. Let's read verse 6. Let's see what, what this says here. It said, but when he saw Jesus afar off. Coming out of that ship. That's got to be him. I heard about him. I heard about him. He had power. I'm in this dead situation. I'm leaving this deadness and I'm going to life. Huh? I'm leaving this dry place and I'm going to a green. I'm going to talk to him. He's green. How do you know he's green? Because Jesus said, if you do this to a green tree, good Lord Almighty, <laughs> you know what they'll do to the dry. I'm going over there where life is. Notice what it says, verse six. Come on. I need everybody out. Six loud as you can. And if you have to whisper, good Lord, you whisper. And if you can't read it out loud, you just meditate on it. Ready to read. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran. Batman. Y'all don't remember that day, huh? Y'all remember the Bionic Man, Six Million Dollar Man, Lee Majors? Look like I'm going slow, don't it? Yeah. I'm trying to put emphasis on this. To, to show you something. It said he ran and did what? Worshipped him. Oh, stop right there. This man that 
man that didn't have any friends, this man that was isolated, this man, a man that was trying to kill himself. This man that had strength to break chains. This man, a man that people were scared of. This man that people tried to hold back. All of a sudden, he saw Jesus. He saw him. Now, notice what he did. He didn't see him and just say, hey, or just look at him. He said he ran to him. <laughs> He ran to him. He, he wasn't that crazy. <laughs> he ran to him. Maybe he knew that was going to put it in the book of Mark. On your mark, it said, go. Maybe that's what clapping is in church. Maybe clapping is the starting signal for somebody to start saying something. Instead of looking around, sniggling about Who's shouting and who's clapping and who crying and who rubbing the head? I think them old guys rub their face when the gospel get good. Uh, <laughs> instead of doing all of that, just, just, just you just praise him. You run to him. Good Lord of mine, I'm excited in there. I'm excited in here. I'm I'm not in the pulpit, but I'm trying to pull somebody out of the world. Whew. God wants to save you. God wants to help you. God wants to fix you. God wants to rearrange you. Notice what happened. It said, and this man, when he saw, you said, you got to have faith. Good morning, Earl. Good morning, Miss Sims. God bless you. Good morning, Elvis. Miss Johnson. Minister Wright, God bless you, my friend. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, he ran. Now, look what he said here. Let's look at this. Now, this word worship, it, it, it's, it means worship. Worship is, 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 is uh, reverence to God. Uh, privately and publicly, reverence to God. There's many ways to give reverence to God. And, and we're going to look at this. There are many ways to give reverence to God. But the way you give it is, is the way you feel it. Huh? Some people can grab themselves, turn around in 10 times in a quick circle. And people say, what's wrong with him? Ain't nothing wrong. I'm just giving reverence to God. <laughs> huh? Huh? Yeah. It's many ways to give reverence to God. And, and that's what we're talking about here because, amen, I don't know like you know what he done for you. I don't know like you know. Huh? Now, notice what it said. It said in verse 6. I'm trying to get there. I'm so excited about this thing. Oh, I'm so excited. Mark chapter 5, verse 6. Amen. And I want to look at that word worship in chapter 6. And that word is a Greek word. Uh, which is proskuneo, proskuneo, amen. Now, that word means to uh, many ways of worship. That means kiss the hand, huh? That meant fall down on your knees in front of a leader, amen, and bow down people from Asia, amen. They, they bow when they, as a respect even to a stranger. He, now, this wild man, he didn't run up and smack Jesus. He didn't run up and push him and say, this is my graveyard. Get out of here. Maybe Jesus was just doing an observation in the graveyard talking about one day I'm going to wake them all up who believe in God. <laughs> huh? Maybe he was just scanning the premises. He didn't run out there and push him and say, you bringing some chains to chain me too? This man was not crazy as people thought he was. This man, he ran and, and, and gave God worship. It may fall to the ground. There's some religions and some people, when they get down on their knees, they put their head on the ground. There's many ways to worship. I don't know exactly what this man did, but this word worship means that he bowed. Lord have mercy. He bowed. Yes. And I'm thinking about that song that the gospel choir sang, Mama bowed and prayed for me. Huh? 
Mother bow, yes, my mother bow. Mother bow, yes, my mother bow. Have your children ever seen you bow and pray for them? Mother bow, yes, my mother bow. And pray for me, yes, my mother bow. Sometimes in the kitchen, yes, my mother bow. Sometimes in the yard, yes, my mother bow. Sometime after the sermon on Sunday, yes, my mother bow. Oh, I see bow, she mother bow. Yes, my mother bowed and prayed for me. I remember that old song. Oh, I can't wait to get the gospel choir back in action here. I'm missing y'all. I'm missing y'all. But all I'm trying to say is there's something about bowing down and praying. Hmm? Maybe not every time, but every once in a while. Good morning, Miss Peyton there in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Hmm? Don't be ashamed to bow down. We learned that from David a while ago. Bow down and pray. Man, we got one more stop. We got to get out of here. Turn to Luke chapter 13. Amen. My question, my question. I got a question. I got a question. And, and excuse me, let's go to the verse 7. I got to go to verse 7. Because not only did he bow, but notice what he said. And he cried with a loud voice. Verse 7. Uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 7. This man was bowing down crazy, probably smelling like four cows and two pigs. And a whole year worth of dirty clothes. Lord have mercy. False comps, mm, um, and false, amen, drain pipes all together in one, but, but Jesus didn't push him back. <laughs> every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Whether you smell like cologne or just smell like you just got off a cattle truck. Mmm, mmm, long. <laughs> now notice what he said. Verse 7, we got to talk about what he said. He, he, when he got down on his knees, when he was bowing, when he was in his worship position, he said, uh, Jesus cried loud voice. He said, he, you know, the man said, what am I to do with you, Jesus? You are the son of God. So he knew who he was. He knew who Jesus was. And if he didn't know, the evil spirit in him knew who Jesus was. See, sometimes we look at people from the outward appearance and you think they don't know Jesus, but they might know him better than you. They might know more scripture than you. They might can preach better than me. They might can sing better than uh, Kirk Franklin. I don't know. You don't know. That's why every believer is somebody in the body of Christ. And every believer that's going to get saved and come into the body of Christ, we don't know how they're going to come. But once they come, you got to accept them. Huh? Smelling good or not? Got me? Good Lord Almighty. We got to get out of here. He said, notice what he said. He said, I adjure thee by God. He was praying to Jesus, asking God, which is the right way. You got to ask it in Jesus' name. <laughs> He said, don't torment me. I've been too, too much. Don't torment me. I've been laughed at. Don't, don't torment me. They, they've been laughing at me already. They've been picking up. Don't torment me. I, I've been, look at all these cuts and bruises on me. I, I, I've, I've, been, I've been crying. Look at my eyes. But don't torment me. But if you, if you will, the Lord just saved him and delivered him. Amen. That's all I want to tell you. I got one more story. Luke chapter 13. Turn over there. We got to get there. We got to get there. We got. We're going to try to work this thing real quick. We, we got to work it quick. Oh, Lord. I see you out there, Lisa Petty. Tell me more. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more about Jesus in a minute. We know what we're going to look at here in Luke 13. This is going to be our last little stop today. On this section of bowing, I do believe it, it, it's so much, but I just want to give you a brief uh, 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 a touch of each position. 
to allow you to know that pray differently sometimes. Just don't pray the same position all the time. Change it up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some people eat the same hamburger all the time. Change it up sometimes. Huh? Sometimes lettuce, tomato, ketchup. Sometimes no ketchup. Sometimes no lettuce. Sometimes, amen, no tomato. And sometimes you just out of all of them things and you just got meat and bread. <laughs> Change it up sometime if you have to or, or just if you need to. <laughs> huh? I'm just trying to help you see it's still a burger. It's still a prayer. Change it up sometime. Verse 13, we got to get out of here. This story is about a woman. This woman. Amen. This is a famous woman. Her name is not in here. Amen. And that's what I love about the Bible. It says a certain man or a certain woman. A lot of time, amen, it don't, it doesn't do that. It doesn't give a name because, amen, that person represents somebody. Amen. And it represents lots of times uh, of the person that is seeking God. Amen. And, and you can put your, your name in there when you read it. Just think about yourself. Verse 13. Let's go down to verse 10. Amen. Verse 10, 13, verse 10. We got, amen, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, Doug and Fresh, and you on, 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 on. We got to work this thing out in 10 minutes. We're going to work it quick. Good morning. Palo, Miss Myra Palo, Big Stone Gap, Virginia. All right. Amen. God is God up there, too. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Verse 10, here we go. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Notice, he was just out in the graveyard, just had got off a ship. The ship was most likely on the Sea of Galilee. So he was water, land, amen. And here we find ourselves, he finds himself in church, in the synagogue. Amen. If Jesus went to church, y'all think it's a good thing for us to do? Y'all know right now it's um uh, it's uh, uh pandemic time, but but we we worshiping this like this now, but soon as we can. The Lord, I'm excited about getting back in there. Verse ten, here we go. Time ticking. We got to go. Verse ver verse eleven. Amen. This was on the Sabbath day. He was in the church on the on the day set aside for church. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. If Jesus kept it holy, we need to keep it holy. Verse 11, come on, everybody, loud as you can, especially the women. I want the men to read out loud. Y'all hear me? I want the men to read out loud. Thank you, Miss Janine. I hope you have a wonderful week, too. But I want the women to read out very loud. Amen? I want the, the men to read out loud. I want the women to read out very loud. Come on, verse 11, ready to read. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years and was bowed together. She was bowed together. I'm turning sideways so you can see. You seen the little old lady? Even young ladies, even men, children bowed over. Sometimes it just happened. She was bowed over, bowed over, bowed over, however you want to say it, together and no and could in no wise she could lift up herself. Amen. Can somebody say lift up herself? She couldn't lift up herself. She had a problem. For 18 years, a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of sickness. Infirmity means sickness. The infirmary, again, is a place where you get help, a medical help on college campuses, on military bases, on uh, big businesses. They have a room for help called the infirmary. The lady with the infirmity went to the synagogue, which was the infirmary. Good Lord of mine. <laughs> yeah. She went to the church for help. Huh? David was sick a while ago. He was on his bed of affliction. But David, a man, could not possibly leave. He bowed there on his bed and prayed. This woman had a bad back. She might have had a slip disc. Maybe in the upper lumbar, maybe in the thoracic, maybe, amen, amen, on the lower part of her back. <clears throat> huh? Maybe she 
was trying to pick up a mop bucket and pull muscles in her back. I don't, I don't know, but it was a spirit of infirmity. And she had it for 18 years. So for 18 years, this woman, and this is what I'm trying to get to, this woman was bowed over automatically. But she was not bowing to pray. See, some people are bowed over, but they're not bowing to pray. That's my whole point. <laughs> Amen. Huh? See, sometimes you can go through the motion, but you're not hooked up in the spirit with God. She was in the right position. Huh? She was in the right place. Huh? And notice what he's saying in verse 12. Verse 12. Amen. We, I told y'all, we're about to get out of here. Verse 12, read and read. And when Jesus saw her, that woman bowed over. I know that's a problem, but could it be that the woman was bowed over? And when she was bowed over with her sickness, she bowed in her heart and mind to God in prayer. They say, Lord, I've been dealing with this thing for 18 years, and I'm still one of your faithful servants. I don't know what a prayer was. But notice in the other Mark 5, the man with the problem saw Jesus. But in this verse, Jesus saw the problem. Good Lord Almighty. Huh? <laughs> yeah. His eye is on the sparrow. Birds, everything, the whole world. And I know <laughs> he watches me. He watching you. Huh? He watching. He has an eye. That's why when you bow and pray, whether you can, that David sick, can't, wild man, dead, this woman already in the position of bowing, I sing. <laughs> Because I'm happy. Anybody out there happy? I sing because I am free. His eye is on Boston. New York, Winston-Salem, Tennessee, Georgia, everywhere you are, Gaffney, Spartanburg, Shelby, Forest City, his eyes on the sparrow, <laughs> and I know he watches over you and me. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He saw her there. I'm about ready to leave you here. We get ready to go. And he called her. He said, come here. It didn't say how old she was, but she just said she had this problem for 18 years. Maybe she was in her 30s. Maybe she was in her 40s or 50s. Maybe she was a senior citizen. <laughs> uh, but the thing I love about it, that that was her last day. Uh, being bent over because of the infirmity. Notice what he said. He said here, he said there in a uh, verse. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, he said unto her, woman, he said, you are loosed from thine infirmity. That thing not going to hold you back no more. Huh? Break every chain. <laughs> you see, in chapter 5, the man broke his own chain. 
<laughs> but if you let Jesus break your chain, <laughs> it'll be all right. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got for you today. Huh? Bow down sometime and pray. Charlotte, North Carolina in the house. Same God <laughs> is there in the Queen City. I'm so excited. God bless you. Greenville, everywhere you are. Amen. This is a Bible study. I pray that it has blessed you. I have enjoyed this time with you, and I pray that you have enjoyed your time with me. Bible study is important. Thank you so much for being part of this special day. We do have prayer requests. I want to say happy birthday. I did see it come across the screen. I do believe on Sunday worship to my cousin Dwight Rogers. Amen. In Nashville, Tennessee. God bless you. I think it said Wednesday. If it wasn't this Wednesday, it was last Wednesday. Happy birthday, cuz. God bless you and the family there and my family everywhere and God's family everywhere. May God bless you. Amen. In a mighty way. We ask your prayers for uh, the Manning family. Miss Patricia Manning went home to glory on, on Sunday uh, uh, morning, early on the morning train. Her service will be Friday at 1 p.m. at the Concord Baptist Church, a graveside service. Amen. And um, we thank you for your prayers. Miss Janice Shippy uh, Rainey, uh, members of the great Shippy family, we extend our condolences to you. Uh, that service will be Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Shady Grove Baptist Church. Uh, there with my friend and brother, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Lee Byers Jr. is a very fine pastor. Uh, we express our deepest condolences to the entire family. To the family, Miss Vera Williams. Amen. We uh, heard that she went home to glory. I remember a few weeks ago, name came across, and we had been praying for her. Amen. And now, amen, uh, God, amen, has picked another flower. Uh, I think her services are today. And for Miss Marion Powell, amen, uh, we send our condolences to you. Uh, where our second vice moderator, uh, Reverend Michael Golden, is a very fine pastor, uh, that service will be there. And I do believe Miss Williams uh, was at the, I think, United Methodist, where my friend, the Reverend uh, uh, Calvin Smith, is a very fine pastor there. Again, we love you, and, and keep God first on your list. Amen. I had a wonderful time. I'm so glad we had this time together. Huh? Oh, yeah, we had a wonderful time. Remember, Elvis Johnson, he's on today again. He's out of the hospital. And just pray for one another. We have a lot going on. We need prayer now more than ever. Again, to all of you, I love you. May God bless your churches. May God bless your pastors, your families. And again, remember, Sunday is Valentine's Day. Amen. I pray that you will make it special for the people you love. Again, thank you so much. Let's bow and pray. Father, we thank you <laughs> for these stories today about bowing. And there are so many more in the Bible, God, but we thank you for these uh, that you brought our attention to, to share uh, with your people. God, I pray that they will enhance their lives, oh Father, and, and they will be able to enhance the life of others, their family and friend, oh Father. Uh, we must spread the gospel, oh God, around the world. And it's spread through your people. God, I pray right now, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice, oh God, that's like David, they're sick on their bed of affliction. God, if they're like the man with the tombs that are isolated and are hanging around dead people uh, with evil spirits. And God, I pray, uh, if someone is like this woman, God, just have something in our body that's just hindering us. In the name of Jesus, set them free right now. Set them free right now. Oh, God, I pray no good thing will you withhold from us who continue to serve you and seek you and learn about you so we can help uh, be better equipped to serve you and to serve mankind. God, we pray for this country. Oh, God, uh, people saw what happened, but people still saying it didn't happen. God, we need help. Our leaders need help. They are, God, some of them just forgetting what they're there for. They're forgetting what they're there for. And I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, that you would just help our country overcome this bump in the road, that you will smooth it out, make the hills low, make the valleys eat plains, and make the crooked straight. God, we know you can do it. You can do it. You will do it. And I pray that you will give our country, God, a people that understands, oh God, that you're working in the midst of all of this chaos. That you're working in the midst of this deception. 
that you're working in the midst of this graveyard experience. But we know, oh God, that you will visit the graveyard. We pray, oh God, that you will help save change and help, God, our leaders be leaders. Not to be worried about what political affiliation or if they're not going to get no votes. God, we pray for the right thing. For the common man, God, right now people are in jail for the wrong thing. And, and God, I just ask that you will keep us encouraged. For when we see call and right wrong and wrong right, God, it's discouraging. But I know you able. You still have kings and leaders uh, just like Solomon. And we're bowing down praying now that the next leaders would be better than the previous leaders. Thank you. All over the world, in Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Huh? Did you say amen? Did you say amen? All right. I love you. Thank you so much. Again, keep all these things in mind. I uh, Thank you so much. We'll see you Sunday again at 10, my friend. Amen. Facebook Live Worship Concord Baptist Church. Have a beautiful day.